Oh, shalom. Welcome to Good News from the Galilee, our daily prayer hotline. Uh, and we are so excited that uh, we are again, we find ourselves in a moment where God wants to give us some more of his riches. Uh, we got to talk about scepter. We got to talk about yesterday. We talked about stewardship, being good stewards. It's just fun to go through these weeks and go through these times where... Uh, some of these people share more and more people are, get prayed for and their prayer requests get met. They give testimony. Others ones are, are just go start. those vessels uh, which help give us uh, the, the understanding that we're not just us and our problems. We are actually part of a great adventure, quite a, part of a, quite a great story that God is telling and uh, it's another day here at the Aliyah Return Center. The workers are working, and believe it or not, we're getting this internet turned on today. We've we've had to rely on like our cell phone, and we have, a, and the, sometimes the signal isn't isn't good. And uh, but now every building will have well, they're turning on the first of the of the internet actual lines. That's a fiber optic line, so they're turning that on. Today, by tonight, it's supposed to be on in the office and uh, over in Vertical, Galilee House of Worship and Prayer. Uh, it's going to be just uh, amazing for, and I know sometimes people want to actually have, are, are saying, hey, we'd like to, when we do our shift, our prayer shift, we would like to, or worshiping, we would like, we wouldn't mind putting that on Facebook. Others say, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, you might end up seeing some more uh, that are streamed out of Vertical Galley House of Prayer. But you know what? It's, it's really an exciting time to be alive, not because everything's all roses and cherries and, uh, you know, because it's all easy. It never, it never is easy. I'm excited to be alive because I know the enemy's getting angry because of the good things that God's doing in his land, restoring his land, Jewish people coming home, 700 verses out of the Bible are being fulfilled as we speak more and more and more requests. People saying we want to be there. Governments are telling us, I heard on the radio, you know, we're expecting for there to be waves of maybe even half a million people over the next few years. And talking about how the Aliyah Return Center could grow to be a central hub for Aliyah in the entire Galilee area, the entire region here where people will have a landing pad here, find a job, maybe connect them with uh, relationships with believers from around the world, and uh, who knows, maybe their job takes off, and uh, they end up needing a house to stay long-term, they can't stay here forever, uh, move them off, start cities, ask the local uh, governments, would you put, uh, local um, municipalities, would you get us the authorization to put a road here, we need bulldozers, we need to put down here internet cables, we need to put electricity, water, sewage, trees, plant trees, you know build houses. Uh, it's really a, an exciting uh, look. I'm talking looking into the future after we complete the next Aliyah building here, after we complete the rest of Vertical Galley House of Prayer, the incubator, and so on. It's just exciting. But I'll tell you what, though. When you're in the trenches, when you're in the midst of it all, uh, it, can be, it can feel a little bit uh, tough. You can feel sometimes the weight of the weight on you. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever felt that weight on you sometimes when you're in the middle of something amazing, but you can feel the weight of, of the journey? You can feel that. And uh, I don't know if you've ever felt this before. Um, let me see. I want to say hi to you guys real quick here. Um, I know that I can say that anyone who's in the midst of doing God's will, you're going to feel this. You're going to feel this. You're going to feel it. Okay, so, well, good to see you, of course. Uh, Steve Martin, how's it going? Cindy Cartsonis, Werner Linz, good to see you again. Uh, Sila, oh. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, Kay Tippett, Amy Nalagon, it's wonderful to see you. Oh, guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for standing with what God's got going in the Galilee and really a blessing on your nations. A blessing on Finland, a blessing on the United States. I believe it. I believe it. It's found in Genesis chapter three, and uh, talks about this. Um, talks about this Abrahamic blessing, and you know the nations are part of it. It's part of this relationship coming together. I just love it. Don Watcher, Jackie Flood, Dave Flood. Hope you're feeling better, Jackie. Mm. It is great to be this family together, isn't it? By the way, this shirt we also have that on our website too. It's a little bit old. This one's a little faded, but it says life. We're living the life that God wants us to live. In Hebrew, Chaim. That's my name. 
Chaim the Galilean. And uh, yeah, so definitely go ahead and put your, um, oh, we want to pray for Jerry Evans. Jerry Evans, let's pray for Jerry Evans. He says, only have 10 minutes, but we've got to pray, bless you all. Pray for my wife, Tammy Evans. She's become sick. Pray for the medical, medical, medical expertise uh, p- transport workers that are transporting the patients out that have coronavirus. These are times to press in. These are times to stand in prayer. These are not times to give up. These are not times to slack off. These are not times to cut back on the prayer. These are times to be in prayer every day. And I suggest, hey, I'm, I've invited the nation of Singapore to start joining us every day uh, and begin to, to bring our prayer requests before the Lord. So I bring Tammy Evans before you, Lord. We just pray, Father God, you bless her and that she wouldn't, that she be healed. You're the great physician. We just pray you'll heal her and bless her in Yeshua's name. Yes. And, uh, oh, whoever enjoyed, the, whoever ordered shirts, I'm glad you like them. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, now, here's what it is. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about something today. I got off the phone yesterday. I had this big, long call. People are sometimes saying, writing me and saying, hey, we're seeing it. We're, thank you for praying for us. It doesn't mean, though, that everything is all Easy, does it? I'm gonna give you a little. I'm gonna give you a little example right here. Okay, doesn't mean everything's all easy. Look at this. I don't know if you can read this. <laughs> can you read this at all? <laughs> can you read that? Some people might say, "Look, I want to be able to." Can you see that? All right. What does that say? Can you read that? A little closer. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying is that sometimes people might uh, bang head here. This, the instructions of how to use this is to place this on a hard surface, this piece of paper, on a hard surface, and uh, like this wall, and then just bam. Okay, that's how sometimes people can feel. Sometimes people can feel. Uh, like that's all the, all you can do. Sometimes you're in a situation and you feel, man, there's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm trying to do your will. I'm trying to do this and I feel like I'm coming up against people. They just don't get it. They don't believe. They don't hold on to your words. They don't have faith. And I'm feeling what's called stress. Stress. Indeed, it's a real thing. It's not healthy either. I could talk about the, uh, what stress can do to you. It's not good. It's not a good thing at all. Um, But what I wanted to talk to you about is when you feel this stress, maybe it's attacks of the enemy. What do we do when you feel that? You're trying so hard. You're setting up the conference. You're doing this, but things aren't working. And why doesn't the internet work? And why is it cutting off? And why is this? And why is that? And why are the other? Why are the workers late? Why did they take down the scaffolds? They should have had them up longer. It wasn't finished. And when you're in the midst of the struggles of life, and the stresses, how, what do we act, what do we do? I know, so my, our, my doctor, he said, he said, hey, you should start killing people. I, he didn't say exactly that. He said you should start removing stresses in your life. You get it? It's a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same thing. But, uh, you know, you know uh, the, some, the doctor called and he said, have you had a, had a stress test recently? And I said, boy, did I. It's called... Life. Life is a stress test. It's a test of how we handle problems, how we handle when things are not going right. It's not how you handle when everything's going fine, when you're sitting there listening to your, I don't know, what, Chopin? You're listening to a little Mozart, listening to a little Bach, maybe, you know, and you're, you're just, you're hearing, uh, you're hearing, you know what I think, you, um, I'll tell you what you're hearing. You're listening to this, this sound. Uh, uh, you are listening to this this sound. Uh, uh, what was that song called? It's called uh, oh, it's called it's called Vincero. That's what it is. Vincero. I love it. Uh, how does it go? Vincero. Do you know that song? Uh, which is uh, I forgot who does it right now, but it's uh. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, who does that song? Do you guys know that song? It's just so, uh, Nisun Dorma, I think it was. Wasn't it Nisun Dorma? Yeah, Nisun. I got, yeah, I got it. I got to do it. I got to do it. 
here we go. I gotta find it for you. Here it is. Now listen, you're sitting here, you're listening to this song. You know how beautiful that song is? And it goes on. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll hear a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Here we go. Listen to that. That means... Okay. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, sorry, it took me a little time to find that. Nisun Dorma. And, uh, but you know what the thing is? When you're listening to, um, you know, uh, what is it? Andre Bocelli. And you're listening to the sound uh, called Vincero, that he sings in the end. Vincero it means victory in, uh, in Ital Italian. It means victory. Very similar to Spanish, very similar to French. Uh, it means victory. But let me tell you what. When, you, when are you... Uh, when you're listening to that and you're enjoying your time, you're relaxing, you're taking a walk in the park, you're playing with your kids, life isn't stressful. Those are things that de-stress you. But now, are we looking to de-stressors or are we looking to God? How do we handle when these stresses occur? How do we do it? What do we do? Well, let me tell you what it is. I'll tell you one more little quick uh, precursor to that. Um, I'm going to be very busy in the afterlife. Uh, it's, this is, uh, this is uh, okay, this is a really funny one. I'll just tell you, okay. You mean to tell me a stress ball isn't to throw at people who are stressing me out? No, a stress ball is this thing that you just, it's, it relaxes the muscles <laughs> by squeezing it. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, if it's true that stress brings on weight loss, then how is it that I'm not invisible by now? The question that I ask you. Uh, here's the thing, is if we don't know how to give the things that stress us to the Lord, then you know what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to be trying to you know, manage our stress. That's not what we need to do. We don't need to manage stress. We need to go into the battle, into the fight, and, and let God be our, let give it to God not give it even to our wife or to our kids or to anyone else. We just need to give it to God. You following me? Have you ever, have you ever had a time, have you ever had a time, maybe uh, Theodophilus, or Theophilus, sorry, Theophilus. What about you? Have you had a time, Tammy Richards Wynn, have you had a time, Mark Imbledon, where you just felt the world was caving in on you and you felt that there was such a stress that you didn't know how to handle it? And you're just saying, Lord, I, I, it's too much for me. I feel like I'm collapsing. Have you ever had that? Well, let me, what did you do? What did you do in that time? You, did you pray? Did you go to a punching bag? So there's things that are, are stress alleviators. That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what I call the answer to everything, because there is a higher power. There is there's something that you do, and I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Let's first open by turning to this really wonderful verse, because it's not about trying to calm down or trying to calm yourself, and it's just saying, Lord, what are you saying in this? What are you saying in this scenario? What are you telling me in this? What are you, what are you saying? Is it something that I that can learn from? Hey, learn from it. Don't need to be stressed about it. Learn from it. Uh, what is it that God's saying? Uh, let's, let's quickly open to James or Yaakov chapter 1. Has some nice, nice stuff for us. James or in Hebrew, Yaakov. Jacob. His real name was Jacob, you know? There isn't any James. There's no James. There was a King James, but there wasn't a James. There wasn't a guy named James in the Bible. There was a guy called Yaakov and, uh, or Jacob. Jacob, famous name, famous guy. Now, we're going to read verse, verse 1. Uh, sorry, James chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, here we go. My brethren, oh, by the way, here, here's, here's an interesting, let's start with verse 1, 1 verse 1. James, or Yaakov, a servant of God, and to the Lord Yeshua, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Do you know, look how he starts that out. He starts out 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. He writes to them, 
It's like, hey guys, I'm going to give you hope. So this was written, right, to the 12 tribes. You ever think about that? He's writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. I don't know if anyone's ever talked to you about that. Like, why is he writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad? And there's this hope of the great return, which we're part of. That's what the Aliyah Return Center is here for. That's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. That's what we are doing is to bring in the tribes, bring them home. And uh, anyway, uh, he says, to the 12 tribes, greetings to you. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into the diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. And let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, lacking nothing. Wanting means lacking nothing at all. And uh, count it all joy. I know there was this band called Acapella back in the day. Have you ever heard of the band Acapella? Anybody heard of the band Acapella? There's a great song by them. They're, they're from back in the day. Um, a song that's, that's a, a, an album called, I believe it's called The Book of James. And it's a whole album about joy and pure joy when you face the many trials of life. Consider it pure joy. Yeah, it's just great. Pure joy. Can we look at stress and say, ooh, it's something that actually is pure joy? I thought listening to um, Nisun Dorma was pure joy. But no, it says count it pure joy. Count it all joy when you fall into these temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works out patience. And you become a still water. You become a, you become a calm and quiet stream that won't flare up. It's not an unstable person, unstable in all his or her ways. No, 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 no. Stable, peaceful, calm. And so, so I love it, right? Any of you, have any of you, I want to ask, have any of you had an experience where you feel the world is caving in on you, where you feel, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, and it feels like stress? Yes? And what did you do during that? How did you get through it? You're here today. How did you get through it? What did you do? I think it might be helpful to anyone listening. How did you get through it? Yeah, this is one of the shirts called Life. It's really awesome. All right, life can be stressful. But stress is not good for your heart. It's not good. Some people say it could cause cancer. It's, it's just not good for you. It's very bad. You don't want to have stress. And you don't have to. Even, like I was thinking about this, even in the Holocaust, people found, some people found in the Holocaust, you can't get much worse than that, found a way to say, to, sit, to make, to write diaries, to sing songs, to, uh, there was some people that were, uh, entertaining. There's movies about this. But I thought, how in the world can you do that in a time where just everything, everything is going wrong? You know, and there's always a, there's always a greater um, measure that we can take of saying, oh my goodness, wow, um, it could be a lot worse. When things look horrible, it could be a lot worse. You know what I'm saying? So here's what I'm believing is that um, we need to look in, look in Luke Chapter 21, verse 19. How do we get through these, these, why is this happening to me? Why, why? Is that what we should do? Is that what Luke 21, 19 says? Well, let's look. Why is this happening to me? Uh, <laughs> that's just, you know, here we go. Here we go. Luke 21, 19. All righty, all righty. And it says, uh, in your patience, uh, it says, stand firm and you will win life. Stand firm and you will win life. So life isn't stress. Life can be stressful, but if we know how to give this to, give this to life, learning patience and learning uh, what God wants us to learn, then we are going to gain life and the fullness of life. And not, it goes on, and there will not one hair of your head perish. Not one hair. It even says in verse 17, you will be hated of all men for my namesake but not one hair of your head will perish. And in your patience, you will win life. Isn't that interesting? Who, don't you want that? Don't you want to be someone who goes through the hardships, goes through the trials, but then you win eternal life. You win eternal life. You win. You run so hard and you win. And, or do you want to, be, you want to take it all on your shoulders? It says right there some bad things. You're going to be hated by everyone for my name's sake, but we're going to get through it. God's going to take us through everything that will come, no problem. 
no problem, no worries. Remember we had one of our episodes called No Worries. It was, it was funny. But this is about stress, giving God, our, giving God stress. It's, is it something that's even for us, you know? Um, now, uh, Psalms 119, I love Psalms 119. Because look at how King David was, right? He was there, um, he was there under a lot. I, I sometimes talk about him, how he had spear thrown at him. Well, he had a giant trying to kill him. He had his very best friend died. He had uh, a crazy madman trying to kill him. Uh, you know, it was just, but yet look what he says through it all. Look what he says in Psalms 119, chapter 1, verse, verse 147. Look at this. Psalms 119, verse 147. Okay. He talks about here and he says, sorry, verse 143. Uh, all right. Trouble and languish. Let's start with verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Your law is the truth. Trouble and anguish, though, have taken hold on me, yet your commandments are my delights. Right? So, again, has, has any, have any of you written if you've had an experience where you feel the world was caving in on you and you didn't know what to do, but what did you do? How did you get through it? You're here. So please write. Please write something to encourage even me. Write it. I want to see um, what he says here. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I will live. I cried with my whole heart. That's what he did. He cried with his whole heart unto God. Just cried out. Uh huh. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. This word gives us delight even when trouble comes on us because we know we're doing the right thing. We know we're in the right camp. We know we're in the camps of the righteous. We know. We know we're doing what we're supposed to be doing together. We recognize it. We believe it. And if we're doing that, when trouble comes upon us, even like it happened for David, even like it happened for Joseph, even like it happened for Gideon, even like it happened for Melchizedek, for, I mean, for um, uh, so when Abraham met, met Melchizedek, he was busy fighting when he met what could have been pre-incarnate Yeshua, he was fighting off seven kings of Sodom. And right there, right there, Joshua was about to enter into great battle, and right there he meets uh, the heavenly host. Isn't this, isn't this the general of, the, of heaven's armies? Right? Let's keep going. Let's see what we can. But I want to just see what, you, what you're writing. I can wait for you guys. Hey, has there ever been a time where the world felt like it was collapsing on you how did you get through it? What did you do? Anything. Come on. Come on. Good to see you, Hannah. Good to see you, Hannah Manarchuk. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's so, it's so great to press on to um, the glory that God has for us. Okay. I think 6 or 74. So what I'm getting at is that there's a way to get through these, these trials. There really is a way. And it's, it's not impossible. Uh, let's read this. What, what, what does the Galilean say to the Galileans? He says right here, um, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Okay? For the morrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Think about that. Like, hey, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry for itself. Okay? Let tomorrow take thought for the things of itself. It's probably going to be a crazy day, just like today. It's probably going to be filled with a lot of crazy things. However, don't worry about it. He's saying, this is what Yeshua, I think his, his advice is sound. And he says, don't worry about it. Just, just, whew, don't worry about it. I want to read some of you guys, uh, what you guys wrote concerning those times of testings. Times of testings. Anybody? Is anyone going through a time of testing right now where you're just wondering, how will things work out? How, how am I going to get through this? How are you going to get through it? One, one, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Number two, that's one. Seek ye first. I'm going to write it down, okay? So write it down right now. Number one, <laughs> tip number one. <laughs> tip number one, seek, <laughs> seek you First, the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness.
That's one. There's number one. Stress reliever. There's our number one stress reliever. All right? What's number two? What do we just say is number two? What do we say is number two? Oh, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. Uh, don't worry. Do not worry. It says right there, Matthew 6, 34, do not worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean good planning, but do not, you're not allowed to, worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, let tomorrow worry for itself. This is the advice. I'm just giving you Yeshua's advice. Okay? Tips. That's tip number two. How not to have a stressful life. Okay? It says, uh, one of the things that I really love is found, uh, you know, we know that God will fight for us. Exodus 14 says, God will fight for us. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When, when it was the Aliyah journey, children of Israel had our backs to the sea. We had an army, uh, the strongest army in the world with all their weapons of war, and uh, you have that Exodus 14-14 principle. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it the 14-14 principle. 14-14 principle. 14, 14, the 14-14 principle. Okay, what is it? Stand and see. Stand and see. Just stand. Just stand. And see the salvation. See that he will fight. See that he will, okay. The Lord, and stand and see that the Lord will fight for you. Stand and see. The Lord will fight for you. Principle number three. Do you think that this is helping us to not be stressed? I think it is. I think that it's helping us to be really relaxed and letting God, uh, letting God lead, letting God lead. Now, we got to read Philippians 4, 6. We've got to do it because this is just, it's just, now I'll tell you, I told you many times when I first made my Aliyah, very stressful. It's very stressful for anyone. You got to go to a new country. Where am I going to live? What am I going to, where am I going to work? I don't speak the language. Oh man, oh man, I'm worrying. Uh, how am I, where am I going to have a community? And, and my kids, where are they going to go to school? And, and how am I going to live there? It's like really hot there. We have to serve in the army. How do I get married? Oh my goodness. Where, I mean, where, how, what, where, how, what? Will I be taken care of? Philippians. Philippians says something real. Let's flip to Philippians chapter, what is that, 4 verse 6? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, chapter 4 verse 6. It says really here, look at this. Rejoice in the Lord only when it's good times. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord only when you're feeling like it and only when it's good times. <gasps> oh no, I misread that. I misread that. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That is Philippians 4.4. 4. So it's, it's Philippians 4.4 4 is, sorry, is rejoice. This is Dr. Phil's advice for you, okay? This is Dr. Phil, advice for you. Dr. Phil, Philippians. Philippians 4, what was it? Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord. How, when? Only when it's all good? No, in the Lord. Always. Heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yes? The boom. The 1414 principle. Stand. The Lord will fight for you. See the salvation of the Lord. Right? You love this? Do you love it? Do you love it? It's so good. The boom. Do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These are the tips, my friends. These are the tips. 
Now, look what it says down here. We're, get, we're, getting, we're going forward. We're going forward. We're doing it. We're going to read down to verse 6 here and see what happens. 4 verse 6. It says, worry, be anxious, or worry about nothing. Okay? Worry about nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Oh, there's a nice little thing. So, um, do not be anxious about anything. Let's, let's call it, do not, do not be anxious anything. You're not allowed to be anxious about anything. But what if the bridal dress doesn't come in on time? What if the, the flower girl's not there? Oh, what if the little boy loses the ring? Uh, what if the doggy, uh, what if the balloon that's holding the, the, the ring bearer, it flies away because the window is open and the wind blew? I'm not saying don't plan effectively. I'm just saying do not be anxious about anything. But it says, let, but, you know, what does it say? It's like, but, but, with all prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. Touche, right? Touche. Where it just felt like the whole world was caving in on you and you didn't know how you were going to get past it. You didn't know how you were going to get through it. How did you? You're here today. How did you? Tell me about it. Let me see. Let me see. Let's, let's see what you guys are saying. You guys are pretty quiet today. Pretty quiet. But I want to hear. I want to hear. How do you get through a stressful scenario, stressful situation? Yes? Um, here we go. Let's just see. When he talks to Luke, he says, which one of us, by being anxious, by worrying, can even add one inch of stature in Luke? How can we add even one little tiny bit of stature to our, to our height? You know, do the, do the birds, do they worry? The, you know, do, no, it doesn't help. It just doesn't help. Mm. I can tell you during my wedding, um, before I got married, uh, before I proposed, I remember thinking, wow, um, so I proposed to this girl, she's wonderful, how am I going to, what if, she, what if she's going to want like uh, a fancier house than I can provide for, what if she's going to want a, a fancier car than I can, that I have, what if she's going to want a better food than we have, what if, what if, what if she's, what if she thinks that Israel's just too hot or it's too, it's too much Hebrew and she doesn't understand it and she's from Canada originally? Uh, what, if, what if it doesn't, what if, what if, see that? That is exactly what we're not allowed to do according to those verses we just read from Dr. Phil in Philippians. And, and we need to understand that uh, we, have to, we have to say, I just rebuke that and if God's saying for us to take the jump, take the step of faith, take the hurdle, propose, then get on one knee and propose. And that's, that's what I did up there. It was on the cliffs near, I don't know if you've been to, uh, you've been to um, Herzliya. So Herzliya Harbor. So just up, just uh, next to the Herzliya Harbor, there's these like sand dunes, really high sand dunes. What I did is I put there underneath the sand, I had pre-prepared a little place with some cheeses from around the world. All these cheese covered it, had it in this box sealed under the sand. So she was actually standing right, almost right on top, and I'm like, can you move for a second? But boom, opened it up there, read her the poem, you know, read her a poem, you know, will you be with me for all of my life? Will you be to me, my best friend and my wife? And we had these cheese, and we had, it was so great. And, uh, but long story short, there was that moment of, that I had of, oh, what if, what if, be anxious for nothing, just trust, and look how God has taken care of three children later, Next week is my anniversary. Um, then we started to say, we both, so it's just natural occurrence to sometimes fall into this um, kind of fearfulness. So then we, we said, okay, wow, what if the wedding dress doesn't come in the mail? Oh no, what if we don't, what if it's there in Judea and Samaria? It's there in what some call the West Bank disputed territories. Oh no, what if, what if we can't, oh no, what if people get lost? We'll give them directions, you know? It's not God's way to worry. It's not God's way. Do you see Yeshua worrying? He had to take a decision to go to the cross. Do you see him, though, worrying about the storm? He knows there's going to be a storm. He knows he's going to go to give his life. Did he worry about it, though? Did he uh, stress over it? Did he allow for stress 
in his life. No, he didn't. He just gave it to the Father. He says, Lord, your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Uh, and I love it. So, I mean, look, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs says, look, you will find you will find favor, you will find good success in the sight of God and in man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lead to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. I want to read Psalm 94, 19. Psalms 94, because it's, it's, if you want to have straight paths, and you want to walk, it's not only listening to Nisu Dorma, or listening to classical music, or going on walks. Those are beautiful things. But the first and most important thing I just think, this is what I was really realizing, is giving it to God, saying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. What are you saying in this? Never miss a trial. Meaning, of course, we don't want to have to be in, in a trial, but the, sorry. but the word is never miss a trial because it's a test that you can learn from. You know, uh, whatever it is that's bad, that's stressful, you can learn from it, you can grow, your eternal being can grow. And uh, it's something you can really just grow from. So don't miss that opportunity. Don't just slough, slough it off and move on to the next thing. Think, how can I grow from this trial? And not just, how do I escape the stress that it brought? No, I give that to you, you know? So um, what did I say? Psalms 94, 19 is a really good one uh, because it talks about this very thing. Uh, verse 19, boom, boom. Okay. When I said, this is verse 18, Psalms 94, verse 18. When I said, my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. When we can't go anymore, we just can't go anymore, don't worry about it. He will hold us up. He will do the impossible. And sometimes God lets us get into those situations because he, he wants to do the impossible through us. This whole Aliyah Return Center, it's the impossible. It is. To, try, to do what's going on here, it's the impossible. But with God... All things are possible. And he goes on, In the multitude of my thoughts within me, your comforts delight the soul. You know, or when the cares of my heart are many. Maybe it's better to read it like this. When the cares of my heart are many, right? Your consolations cheer my soul. You know, your comforts, your consolations, they delight my soul. Don't you know that we can just go into vertical galley house of prayer or into your place of prayer or anywhere you are you can just go there and you can just say lord i want to take some time to give you these stresses that that beset us you know and, and we want to be the, those people just filled with joy and filled with light it's like it's like uh taking offense we, we're not going to go into that right now but it's like taking offense it's like you're drinking poison and expecting the other person to die you're drink you're drinking in this worry and expecting it's going to fix something. It's not fixing anything. It's not fixing anything. It's, if anything, it's breaking things, you know? So I'm going to read some of your guys' prayer requests here. Who's got a prayer request that says, listen, I'll not live a life where I'm going to allow stress come upon me. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow it. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to say, Lord, it's, it's yours. It's yours. You're not what my will, but yours be done. You have your way, and it's all going to work out. You want another example? What, let's say Yeshua says, these people are hungry, uh, feed them. Well, the disciples came to Yeshua, actually, and they said, hey, these people are hungry. Over here in the Galilee, just do it. He says, uh, handle it. Go for it. Just do it. Just do it. And, uh, and then and the disciples are like, what is he talking about? Does he, was he expecting that we should have brought money? Was he expecting that we should have had this thought of ahead of time, that we should collect from them? These people don't have money. We're far away from place to buy. What is he? Whoa, 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 whoa. They're stressing. And then he just says, look, it's called faith, all right? Now, uh, who has any food here? Little boy? Okay, five loaves, two fishes, that'll do. And they were able to distribute, and there's 12 baskets left over. Isn't that just amazing? Psalms 91 is when I was in the army. Uh, I would read Psalms 91, and I'd just say, you know, before a battle and stuff, before, you know, and you, you just think of this, he who dwells in the secret place, you got to dwell in that place, in a place of he is my protector. He is, you know, from sickness, from... You could stress and say, oh, what if I would get corona, COVID-19? Oh, okay. Well, what if you did get it? He'll sustain you in that too, you know? It's, it's like, 
we can't, we can effectively plan, but it's not right and it's not God's will to stress about it. Like, you know, um, friends of mine said, hey, we're, we wanna, we're gonna fly. And then, and I'm like, look, they said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's a little scary, a little scary. I'm like, some people say, coming to Israel, they're like, I don't know if I wanna go there to Israel. What if I, you know, what if I get corona? Or what if I get, uh, or, and I'm like, it's more dangerous to drive on snow in, in the wintertime, you know. I'm like, oh, I don't even have snow tires. That's extremely dangerous. Way more dangerous than coming to Israel. You know, people have a wrong perspective because they allow worry and stress to come into their mind, which is not of God. It's, it's more dangerous, actually, to go to any major American city before, before the riots, before anything. It was more dangerous to, do, to go any, to, I mean, if you just look at how many homicides, how many you know, how, how much crime as opposed to come to Israel where everyone's a soldier pretty much. And, uh, but that's not what people think. They allow a stress, you know. So even as I'm supposed to be flying in the end of this month for two weeks in August to the States and some people are like, oh, ooh, really? And I'm like, if you're going to get corona, you're going to get COVID, you'll get it. Get it from a supermarket or, you know, and if God's protecting me, I won't get it. I'm not going to go and Try to get it. I'll be effectively plan, and uh, I'll effectively be planning. The planes are sterile. You know, it's love to love to worry. But if we're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, Psalms 91, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Not in stressing out. No. What if I don't have enough money for my kids to get a Sweet 16 Mercedes car? I'm stressing. I'm stressing, 16th birthday is coming up quickly, and I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with everyone. <laughs> Some of these things you just need to give to God, you know. Uh, plenty of children have survived, and plenty, well, fine, what if I can't get them Princeton, and I want them to go to Oxford, and I want them to, God will take care of these kids. Don't stress about them, that's not helping them, it's not helping them. Um, we do the best we can, you know, and and so I wanted, to, I wanted to say this, is this, um, it goes back to a little, a little it's like a joke, but um, uh, let's see, yeah. <laughs> stress is what happens, stress is what happens when one's mind overrides a basic instinct to hurt somebody <laughs> and your mind stops you. Stress, no, that's, that's a joke. Some, you know, People, you know, um, there, there are so much worse things than the things that we think are, are so bad. Do you know that? I remember, uh, I, remember I talked to my, my son, my son Matia, and uh, I said, hey, Matia, are you bad? Oh, it's so bad. I'm like, what's, what's going on? You just were playing at home all day. He's like, yeah, I made this car, little Lego car, and then... Hadar, my other daughter, my daughter, uh, said, I have two boys and one girl, so came and broke it. And it's just so bad. Life is so bad right now. It's so bad. And I know he cares about that car, okay? He did a lot of work on it. But I see how he he's, was so stressed about this and so worried about this scenario and had such uh, anxiety over this scenario. But I was just like, do you know what? Oh, I guess I could. I guess I could do that. Uh, you know, another thing that, that Matthias says is really funny. I said, hey, could you, I, I talked to him like an adult, you know, lots of times. I said, uh, would you be able to uh, schedule in your day planner uh, a, a moment in there so that we could effectively see that happen within the deadline of this evening when I come home? Could you, sched could you schedule that in, please? And he said, he said, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I'm crunch. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm in a crunch time. I don't think I'll get to that. <laughs> I, said, I said, I said, wait a second. You can't put it in your planner to clean your room today. And he said, I'm fully booked. I'm fully booked. I'm sorry. I'm fully booked. And I thought, well, that's strange. How a child who's not even in school right now, because now it's the vacation, can be so fully booked that they are too busy to clean the room up. Obviously I said, no, too bad. You're gonna make, you're gonna make time. But I'm just saying, even whether, no matter what age we are, we can be stressed over things and we can be too busy, too busy and stressed over things, which really on every level 
there are ways of doing those things and giving those stresses to God. Am I right or am I right? He is our secret place. He is our fortress. Um, boom. Look at, look at Paul. Look at Paul. He was whipped, beaten, shipwrecks, hardships, persecutions, calamities. Uh, 2 Corinthians says, For the sake of Messiah, I am content with insults, weakness, hardships, persecutions, calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So I think that we need to look at these times of weakness as actually, remember I said life is the, life is the stress uh, test. Life is like a stress test. And if we can say in those times of weakness, that's actually when I'm strong because, uh, because we can just cast our cares upon him. You know, he says, my, my, what is it? My burden is easy, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Cast your cares upon me. Cast your stresses on me. Uh, I want to do that more myself, to be honest. So I'm going to start praying for you guys. I see all these prayer requests coming in. Um, I want to be praying for you guys. Uh, yes, for Lisa Styles. Lord, we just thank you for Lisa. We just pray, Lord, that any things that are stresses, Lord, she would give them to you. She would do the action. Not worrying about tomorrow. And like Dr. Phil said in Philippians. Uh, <laughs> let's read that. I want to read that one more time. Like the Dr. Phil. That's fun. Dr. Phil. Here we go. Philippians 4.4. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Isn't that great? That's what Dr. Phil tells you, Dr. Philippians. And uh, so, yes, for Vivian, uh, we just pray, Lord, uh, that she also, any kind of stresses that would come upon our lives, we would give them to you. Because it's not, you said, cast your cares upon me because he cares for you. He cares for us. and He doesn't want us to be bearing these burdens on our own, right? Not at all. Cast them on the Lord. Uh, yes, and uh, yeah, for Lisa, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you for um, Timo Hennila, for Timo Hennila. We just thank you, Lord, that as the Nordic Alliance countries, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, uh, uh, Scotland, uh, all these, uh, Switzerland, uh, anyone with like a big cross on their, on their flag, uh, Lord, we just thank you for the fact that the righteous are rising over there too. And any kind of stresses, Lord, and stresses of elections in any country, uh, we just give that to you too, Lord. We say, your, your will be done, your kingdom come. Not my will, your will be done. Lord, we give it to you. Lord, how much of us, how, who of us can add one inch to our stature by worrying, by stressing? Anyone? No? So, good. So, Dave Flood, we know, we thank you for uh, Nehemiah and Austin Kaufman. Nehemiah, Austin Kaufman, Lord, we just thank you for him that, he, that no stress would be upon him, not on his life, not on his wife, not on his family, not on his, his fellowship, his community. We just pray over the Austins that, Lord, that you, you're going to uh, work all things together for the good in their, in their life, Lord. We just thank you also for, um, yeah, for Steve Martin. Thank you, Lord, for Steve, Lord. What a wonderful man, oh God. We just thank you that all, any worries, Lord, that we'll just cast our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you, Lord, that you have uh, made, you've made a way so we can have a stress-free day. You've made a way that it'll all be okay. Isn't that great? Um, okay, here we go. I'm going to read just one here. Because uh, he, ca you know, cast our burdens on the Lord. He will sustain us. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Where is that? He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Uh, is that in Psalms 55, Psalms 55, 55? Oh, yeah, Psalms 55, verse, verse 22. Psalms 55, here. Check, out the, check this out. Is that the, the righteous will never more, will never be moved. Look at that. Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast your burdens, your stress, on the Lord. He will sustain you. Okay, we have to write that down. We have to write that down. That's such a good one. So good. So good. Okay. Cast your burdens on the Lord. What does it say? Uh, Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. So that's cast your burden on the Lord and he will Cast your burden on the Lord, 
and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be moved. No, the righteous won't be moved. They're going to be strong. They're going to stand firm. They're not going to move. You just got to, you try to move them. You try to push them. You try to stress them. And they're like, I'm not even worried about it. You've been, you've been trying to attack me. I'm not even worried about it. I'm not even anxious about it. I cast my cares on the Lord. But wait, what about your pension plan? Well, if I have some money to put to that, I'll put to that. If I don't, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to have plenty of money, plenty of food. But what about your, what about, what about, hey, I don't want to hear it. I'm going to cast my burden on the Lord. He will sustain us. Um, you know, and one last one here. I want to just, as we're going to wrap up with this, uh, humble ourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that in the proper time he will exalt you, casting all our anxieties on him because he cares for us. That's in First Peter. We get a cast. He said, humble ourselves before the Lord and he will lift us up. He will lift us up. He will exalt us and casting our stress on him because he cares for us. Isn't that just great? Isn't it just great to know that we have this ability, you know? And uh, if, we were, if we were not trusting in God, let me tell you what happened. We wouldn't make Aliyah. Joshua wouldn't have made Aliyah. He, he, in fact, that's what happened. Is there some guys came back and they said, there's these big giants. They could have given that report. That would have been fine. There's these big giants in the land, okay? We're afraid of making Aliyah. We're going to stress now. Look what happened to them. They didn't get to come to the promised land. They had to wander around for 40 years and died. That whole generation died. Only the two who decided not to stress were the ones not to worry uh, were the ones, who, and to really to trust is the other side of that, were the ones who made it in, Joshua and Caleb. The rest didn't make it in. Isn't that crazy? Um, but it's amazing. It's an amazing story to remember to, to go forward. And even when Moses said, guys, let's go. We're exiting from Egypt. Now they could have said, what are we going to do? Die in the desert? Many did, do, many did say that. And they did die in the desert. You know, isn't that strange? Many did say that, and they did die in the desert because they wouldn't trust. They wouldn't just trust. And uh, so we want to be people who trust, people who obey, people who are not dismayed and be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not despair. Do not, do not stress, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, right in here. So if you know that you have God with you, is there really anything to worry about? Oh, but what if, what if persecution happens? What if I have to preach a message? Oh, 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 oh. I was supposed to preach uh, tomorrow, but now I'm moved to next week. But uh, so I was supposed to preach in our local congregation. But uh, there's always that a little bit of stress. What, do I, what am I going to share about? Is it going to really be exactly what the people need? Well, hey, yes, it will be. You're going to be just fine and you're going, to, you're going to walk in the strength of God because he's going to go with you wherever you go. And his strength is right here. You know, um, I, want to, I want to leave you with this. Um, one of the reasons why we're doing this, um, good news from the Galilee, one of them is that we want, we want this family to grow. We want this family to, to blossom and flourish and, and to encourage one another, pray for one another, stand with one another. Uh, and we do that, and it's beautiful. But I want to tell you this. There's this verse that says, a good word, you know, anxiety weighs the heart down, but a good word lifts the soul, cheers the soul. Uh, I think it's in Proverbs uh, 12. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. So Proverbs 12, a good word makes the heart glad. Are you ready to say a good word to someone? I'll tell you what it does. It, excre it excretes dopamine into the brain, into the cortex, in the cortex of your brain, you know? So you've got the frontal lobe, and you've got uh, your cortex, and it's the, like, the thing here, and you've got the cerebrum. So uh, dopamine is excreted. It's just put out there uh, by your brain when someone gives you a good word. Yeah, I don't care if encouraging words are your gifting or not, or are they, are they your um, love language or not. It, it happens, it just so happens that your brain, when it hears an encouraging word, then you, you, you feel encouraged. Proverbs 12 says that. It makes the heart glad. Are you ready to give an encouraging word to someone? As soon as we're done this, I want to challenge you. 
Are you ready to do that? Write yes. Write yes if you're ready to do this little challenge. I'm gonna give you a challenge. If you're ready for it, write yes, I'm ready. If you're not, I understand. You don't have to. Yes, okay. It looks like Lisa's saying yes, she's ready for a challenge. Okay, so I'm gonna challenge you. If you say yes, you have to do it, all right? Here's what it is. You, anyone? Anyone ready for the challenge? Write, just write yes. Just type yes if you're prepared to do a challenge today. We are going to be doing a challenge as we wrap this up. Okay, for, this is for you, Tammy, then. I see Tammy and Judith Smith said yes to a challenge. So I'm going to give you, and Melanie Jackson said yes to a challenge. So did Don Watcher. So that we're going to give you a challenge, and it's the Proverbs 20, 12, 25 challenge. The Proverbs 12, verse 25 challenge. As soon as we're done this, as soon as we're done, as soon as I end this, you're going to have to do this challenge right away with the first person you see. 12, verse 25, and it says right here, Heaviness in the heart makes a man to stoop, but a good word makes it glad. All right? Okay. Or you could say it, anxiety in the heart weighs someone down, but a good word makes him glad. So here's the challenge for, um, for Steve Martin, for Al Alicia Gassaway. Uh, here is your challenge. You're, as soon as it's over, you're going to Proverbs 12 somebody, and you are going to give a good word to someone. Any word, any word. It's going to help people. You don't know how many people are in stress. People are so stressed about corona. People are so stressed about things they're not supposed to be stressed about. And this is going to, and we're going to, as we do this, how much does it cost to give a word, a nice word to someone? It doesn't cost anything. You're just going to do this. You're going to go to somebody and you're going to say whatever God's telling you to say to them. Hey, it could be, hey, nice haircut. Or, hey, um, God bless you, or hey, just wanted to say I've been observing your work and it's really quite phenomenal. You are quite an excellent worker. Wow, wow, you have, you have quite a bit of, what's that word, gusto, you got some gusto. Uh, wow, wow, you, you, you know, you're bringing some snaz and some pizzazz up into the naz, that's the naz Nazareth, if you're walking around in Nazareth, for example. <laughs> so uh, it depends where you are. You can do something. So that's your challenge to say something encouraging, a good word to someone. And the next challenge, there's, there's another challenge too that comes with this. Okay. The another challenge that comes with this is next time you feel something stressful over your life, your body, your work, your finances, your family, your, your calling, your um, ministry, the fall with us and you're saying I don't know if it's going to happen anything that's or it is going to happen good and you're believing that the borders will open good anytime you feel stress the next time you do it immediately you're going to just stop you're going to say Lord I saw what you said is to cast my burden on the Lord and he will sustain he will sustain you I saw what you said over there with well, bam, Dr. Phil what Dr. Phil said rejoice in the Lord always Right? And again, I say rejoice. I saw what you said, uh, I, I saw what you said in, in the 14.14 principle, Exodus 14.14, stand. I'm just going to stand and I'm just going to see how you're going to fight for me. I'm willing to watch you fight for me. I'm willing to look at that. It's going to be spectacular. I'm just going to let this one, I'll let the stress go. I'm going to, Lord, will you fight for me on this one? Do not worry about tomorrow, the Galilean way. It's akuna matata. Don't worry, be happy. That's the Galilean way. Do not worry for tomorrow. Akuna matata. Well, we say it in Hebrew. Uh, we say I don't know what language that is actually. To be honest, we say um, hakol beseder. It's all cool. It's all okay. Akol beseder. See if you can learn that word. Akol beseder. That's the Galilean way. Do not worry about tomorrow. Sufficient thereof is the is the evil to it. Uh, and number one, seek first the kingdom of God as righteousness and. All these things will be added unto me anyway, so I don't got to worry about it. I don't got to stress about that one, you know. So, mm. oh, that's some good coffee. Mm. So let's end with praying for. Um, let's go and pr thank you for for Lord for um, K Tippett, Lord. We thank you for. Um, it's all okay. A cold beseder. We thank you, Lord, that a cold beseder, a cold beseder. That's our version of a kunumatata. A cold beseder. It's all okay. 
and, and uh, we're not going to stress about things. And uh, so we just pray a blessing, Lord, on all these people who have given you uh, their cares and their burdens and who are relying on you, Lord, and we know you're not going to let them down no matter what situation they're going into, what situation they've come from, uh, whatever awaits, house payments, whatever it is, Lord, we just thank you. We put it in your hands. We just thank you for this family. We thank you for this encouragement. And ha thank you for the words we're about to share right away as soon as we end this right now. We'll sandwich up this soft taco. We're going to just wrap it up. And, and we're definitely see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll probably be out and about tomorrow. And we'll be seeing you. And uh, may God richly bless you. So encouraging to be able to uh, have these times together to gain another perspective every day about the great kingdom we're part of. Isn't it a great kingdom? Isn't it a great adventure? It sure is. And uh, love doing it together. Get your life shirt over on the website. God bless. See you guys soon.